What is going on, everybody? It is Trey from... Are you trying to get me copyrighted with that music out there? No. You better turn it off. Oh, what? Uh, come out there. I'm not scared of you. Just trying to get Tate Tree Talks down. Jesus. One to go up top. Drops it off across the middle. Four down. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. Anyway, what is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and we're here back with some AAF content. Today, we're talking AAF picks. We are in week four of the season, almost halfway done with the AAF season. And what a season it has been. It's been really defensive driven and the offensive play has been shaky at best so ladies and gentlemen today we're going to be diving into week number four picks so without further ado ladies and gentlemen i am tree from tree talks and this is my aaf week number four picks Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen first and foremost before i dive in to these games i keep getting comments left and right tree you got a big old zit on the side of your mouth Freaking cold sore. It's my herpes, okay, ladies and gentlemen. And it's never gonna go away because your boy's stressed out 24/7. So you know it's ne it's just never gonna go away. So you know you're just gonna have to deal with Treep's herpes throughout the course of watching Treep talks. I'm just kidding. Hopefully it goes away soon, but that's what it is. You guys don't have to keep reminding me in the comment section. I know now that I brought it up, that's all you guys are gonna be talking about, but. That's okay, freedom of speech on the internet after all. One thing I also want to talk about is the Orlando Apollos and Salt Lake Stallions, which I would imagine would be the best game of the week. It's going to be on Bleacher Report Live and is the first game of the week with Atlanta and Arizona taking the primetime spot. Now, I did hear some rumors of some rescheduling. Now, I don't know if those are 100% true, but if they are, then let me know in the comment section down below because I think that would make the most sense because Orlando and Salt Lake should definitely be the primetime game and Arizona and Atlanta should not. So if you have an update on that, leave it in the comment section down below. But nonetheless, the first game we're going to be talking about is the Orlando Apollos and the Salt Lake Stallions. The Salt Lake Stallions come in as the number one graded defense, actually, even over the Birmingham Iron, and they're facing the number one graded offense. So this Orlando Apollos is going to be taking on the first real challenge defensively that they have faced all season long in the Salt Lake Stallions. Again, they have not played the Iron yet. And this is probably going to be the biggest test for the Apollos so far this season. I know that the Stallions come into this one 1-2. One uh, they've had a lot of quarterback issues. Lenahan, Austin Allen, starting quarterbacks that uh, lost games for the Stallions. But, you know, when Woodrum's in there, they're basically a whole different beast. He's a perfect game manager to fit the system that Dennis Erickson is running with this defense as well. I mean, Carter Schultz, man. How much how much good things can you say about Carter Schultz, the defensive tackle, having four, four sacks in three weeks? He's been impressive all season long. Uh, he's going to be in Garrett Gilbert's face all, all game long as well. This run game as well is, I keep on saying as well, but I mean, it is stout, this run defense. This pass defense is okay. It's all right. Uh, mostly known for its run defense, so you know the uh, Apollos are going to struggle running the running the ball. So we're going to see what Garrett Gilbert can do. And the success for the Stallions is going to be depending on how well they can contain Apollos quarterback Garrett Gilbert. So you saw last week he is mobile and he will run the ball when he needs to and pick up crucial first downs. He did that time and time again last week. And it's going to be interesting to see what the game plan is for. Uh, Steve Spurrier and this Apollos team against probably the best defense they have faced so far. And it's also going to be interesting to see what their defensive game plan is going to be against the Stallions, who are a uh, essentially a power run team with some passing sprinkled in there. But, you know, that's usually Dennis Erickson's philosophy. It's more about the defense and then running the ball with authority. They got three really good running backs that can get it done. Josh Woodrum, again, being the perfect game manager, he just does not make a lot of mistakes. And in this game, he can't afford to make a lot of mistakes because this is going to be a big win for the Stallions. This is going to boost them up a lot in the power rankings and just overall rankings as well if they are able to take down the Apollos. And with that being said, I'm going to take Salt Lake to take the upset over Orlando. I'm going to say Orlando loses its first game and it's going to be on the road at Salt Lake. And, uh, you know, you already seen how hard it was for the Hot Shots to play in Salt Lake. This might be the hardest place to come in and play, not necessarily because of the crowd noise, but just because of the weather overall. 
you know, it's dang chilly. You know, it's just, it's, it's the whole, the whole, you know, region that Utah's in, you know, clumped with Idaho and all that is just snowy. And, you know, the Pacific Northwest, man, is snowy, it's cold, no one wants to go there. I don't blame anybody for losing in Salt Lake because it is just a mess. I would, if there was a Lewiston, Idaho, AAF team, I'm sure they would win games too based on how snowy it is and how cold it is and, you know, how used to the elements they are. And especially an Orlando team who's used to all that warm weather, yeehaw, lucky you guys. But... Anyway, again, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent. I'm going to be taking the Salt Lake Stallions to take down the Orlando Apollos. Coming up next, we got the uh, main event game on Saturday, the San Diego Fleet taking on the Memphis Express Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Now, this game got suddenly interesting after the... Uh, after the developing storyline in Memphis about the quarterback position, Zach Mettenberger is going to get the start over um, Christian Hackenberg, which should have happened a long, long time ago. And the San Diego Fleet team might just be one of the worst teams fleet that's actually have a good record. I don't know. It's hard to say. They do have one of the best running backs in Gardner. And, you know, it, it's hard to say that they're probably one of the worst high-rated teams. But... I mean, it's hard not to say that as well. I think if the Express are ever going to pull up an upset and win a game finally, it's going to be against this Fleet team. I'm not really sold on Philip Nelson as a quarterback. I am sold on Zach Mettenberger as a quarterback. I think that with the talent that they have on this Express team is going to be utilized more now that they have a quarterback that can actually uh, utilize him, essentially. So uh, Zach Mettenberger, I think, is going to lead this Express team to victory over this San Diego Fleet. So two upset victories. Uh, this week in the AAF, for me, I'm going to take Salt Lake to beat Orlando and Memphis to beat San Diego. Now moving on to Sunday, San Antonio and Birmingham. San Antonio has a lot of news surrounding it because of Johnny Manziel, and they have Johnny Manziel's rights. So hopefully they get their head in the game and they're able to do something uh, in this game, hopefully snatch up a victory because I do like the Commanders. But this Iron Team man has been incredible, incredibly stout. And they're trying to take number one on Troop Talk's power ranking. So if the Apollos lose and they win, they obviously get the default number one overall ranking. And I think with uh, them playing San Antonio, that gives them a great opportunity to do so. Logan Woodside's coming off his worst performance of the season. He got benched. And this Iron defense is coming off of one of its best performances of the season they just limit teams to scoring they get turnovers they get you know three and outs everything they make sure that their offense doesn't need to score a lot of points in order to win and i think that's going to be the same formula heading in to this week against the san antonio commanders and i'm going to take the b ham iron to uh solidify itself as the number one team in the aaf after beating the san antonio commanders now for Sunday's main event, the game that I said shouldn't be the main event. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. we got the Atlanta Legends taking on the Arizona Hot Shots Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on NFL Network. And I don't really need to spend a lot of time talking about this one because it's almost really obvious. The Atlanta Legends are clear as day, the worst team in the AAF, and I don't think they get any better, unfortunately. Their offensive coordinator just walked out on them, so, you know, nothing is going Atlanta's way. They're going to be at the bottom of the totem pole this season, and if there's another AAF season next year, they're going to continue to be on the bottom of that totem pole, unfortunately. But they don't have a chance. You know, I'm not even going to say Atlanta has a chance because with all they have, man, and what they've done, they've proved to me that no matter what happens, they really don't put themselves in a good position to win football games. And that's going to be no different against this Arizona Hot Shots team. I think the Hot Shots go out there, run things, and they get an easy victory. And then they're on to Week 5 to play whoever it is they're going to play. Who are they going to play in Week 5? Week 5, the Hot Shots take on the Commanders. So, you know, the Hot Shots have a good... Uh, two-game stretch to try and bounce back from the loss of last week. Uh, should be a good game for the Arizona as well uh, to really see what this team can bring to the table, and they should be able to knock off the Atlanta Legends with relative ease. And that was my week number four AAF picks. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. 
Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you have a great day.